Thank you, uh, Graham, and ladies and gentlemen, it's indeed a pleasure and an opportunity to be here. As I am the interim leader, and I do expire in seven months, uh, I won't be very long this morning. Uh, Graham, thank you for your very f fine comments. I I'd forgotten that I at one time believed in tax credits <laughs> and uh, <laughs> in giving away government money. Uh, it was probably to get Music Canada off my back as much as anything, but uh, the fact of the matter is, and I'm glad that, uh, that Canadians are, are now uh, legally uh, downloading uh, through digital media uh, 100 million songs, but I suspect they're stealing about 300 million songs a year still, so probably should go up the fraud department on that one. Uh, it's great to be here with a gathering of exceptional uh, professionals, economists and uh, forward thinkers like yourselves. I'm impressed at not only the talent and vision brought together for this summit, but the fact that you carried on. So, uh, and I'm also impressed, I mean, most of you would have recognized it, I certainly recognize it, and I do give credit to Premier Wynne and to Premier Couillard in terms of, uh, that was an historic moment we just saw here uh, a couple of hours ago, and I was pleasure to, it was a pleasure to sit through that. I would remind you though that uh, in, in my lifetime, certainly Mr. Davis had good relations with Quebec, uh, Premier, um, <clears throat> Premier uh, Peterson had uh, exceptional relations with Premier Borisaw. Uh, Bob Ray, I, I can't remember because it's such a blur the five years that Bob Ray was in office. Uh, it was my first five years. Um, I was more worried about the deficit as I am today. And, uh, and certainly Mike Harris had uh, exceptional relations uh, with Quebec. But what a wonderful gesture and what wonderful words we heard from the Premier of Quebec uh, this morning and the fact that he would come here to Niagara. Uh, and just the physical presence of the Premier in the province of Ontario and to give us such good wishes and such hope for Canada uh, was a great tribute to, to all of you and to all of Ontarians. So thank you for organizing that. Uh, today we're going to talk a lot about, uh, or you are talking a lot about the summit, the creation of jobs, and I just want to remind you that's not an academic exercise, that there are real people. There's the young girl still living at home in my riding with her parents at 34 years of age because she can't get a job that pays well enough um, or has enough hours uh, to, uh, to, to stay, sustain herself in independent living. Uh, there are just near here, we still have a tremendous unemployment as a result of the closing of the John Deere plant. I was talking to, uh, um, well, I'll miss that. Uh, we've got the, it's, the, it's the young person in Bramalee that's worried about making ends meet because the Unilever plant is about to leave uh, Canada. Um, I guess my message today in the short time that we have is going to be, uh, we are the official opposition, so it is our job to uh, uh, hold the government to account. Of course, uh, wish I wasn't the official opposition, but I am the official <laughs> opposition. Uh, my party has a knack of shooting itself in the foot, and uh, we've done that over the last four elections, but I promise you, we're not going to do it in the future, and the Liberals are going to have to uh, watch their backs. Um, <clears throat> Ed Clark, uh, of course, uh, uh, one of the disappointments we've had in the last couple of weeks was Ed Clark. He really had his hands tied behind his back and really wasn't allowed to give us a uh, full presentation of all the options with respect to privatizing uh, the big government enterprises of the LCBO, um, Hydro, uh, and, uh, and others that he, that he needed to look at. He didn't look at the Ontario Lottery Corporation, for example. Um, so I think we're being gypped at the present moment in terms of all of the options on the table. If Premier Wynne is really going to spend $130 billion, and you can, she might as well say she's going to spend a trillion dollars over the next 10 years on transit, but if you don't have the money, and if you're, you've now tied the one guy that you sent out to, to find you some money, significant dollars, uh, and you tied his hands even before he got started in terms of what the outcomes of that report would be, um, it could be a bit of a fairy tale, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to be the one bringing reality to you, but that could be the reality. We need to build transit. It's one of our priority areas. It was uh, our plan that we presented in the last election was to spend just about the same amount of money as the Liberals were going to spend, and I think the NDP were planning on the same thing but we were trying to show exactly where we're going to find the money for it, and we have to see that from this government and the Ed Clark. Uh, if that's an example, then we're not considering all the options we should. So with that, I remind you that uh, my party wants to be and has had a tradition of being uh, partners with business and partners with academia and partners with uh, research uh, and innovation, and uh, we'd like to continue that and redouble our efforts. And, uh, patch up uh, mistakes we made and, and move forward. So thank you very much for having me today. <clears throat> well,
Okay, Jim, so let's, let's just jump straight in. Uh, you alluded to uh, the debt, and um, it's a fact that uh, interest payments on our debt now uh, amount to almost $10 billion. Uh, um, how important is it that we tackle that, and um, you have some solutions or thoughts on the subject? Well, I mean, the, the government says it has brought in uh, plans to balance the budget by 27, 2018. If anyone's looked at the last couple of budgets, uh, uh, or any of the budgets over the 11 years that they've been in office, uh, there really isn't a plan there. Um, the fact of the matter is, just to put it in perspective for everyone, when, when I was uh, in, in uh, cabinet uh, over 11 years ago, um, when we left 11 years ago, uh, we had $130 billion of gross debt in the province. We were paying $11 billion. Same amount we're paying today, so it's mm -hmm. not 10, it's $11 billion on interest rates on $130 billion worth of debt. Today we have close to $300 billion of debt, or it will be that by the end of this fiscal year, and we're paying still $11 billion on debt. So the problem and the ticking time bomb, and I think uh, uh, the previous finance minister, Duncan, uh, alluded to it uh, on a speech he gave recently uh, on Bay Street, saying, ticking time bomb, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we talked about Mr. Uh, Premier of Quebec saying he has to find $10 billion each year before any other payments can be made, before you can pay the doctors, the nurses, or the school teachers. Um, we're just around the corner because we have historic 20-year lows right now on interest rates, as you all know. If they go up one or two or three percent to traditional traditional ranges, you'll be looking at 24, 25 billion dollars a year uh, that we have to find before we can pay any of the public service or deliver the frontline mm -hmm. services like health care, education and infrastructure that we so rely on and we need we need to do. So it's important we get this in check right. and it's important that when they send someone out like Ed Clark that they allow him or anyone in the future to look at all of the options available right. to government. The Premier said she wasn't ideological about it, but what do you call it when you, you get someone with such a great reputation in the business world, a banker, uh, and you tie his hands, and Mr. Clark said it himself uh, when he did an interview recently, he said, when I, I, when I took the job, I said to the Premier, what do you want me to deliver? Uh, because I don't want to do a, a report that's just going to sit on the shelf mm -hmm. and collect dust like so many of them. So. Uh, we're not off to a great start there, but we, uh, we uh, have a candidate process going on right now in terms of leadership contests, uh, five candidates, and I think we're going to hear a lot of good ideas of how we can pare down the debt. But if we, uh, the, uh, the, the big message is if we don't do it soon, uh, I mean, our, our GDP, you heard uh, the Premier admit it this morning, our G GDP, uh, our, sorry, our gross debt to GDP is, uh, is 39%. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's pretty close to Greece. It's four times worse than California, and we always point to California as a jurisdiction that's badly run on a fiscal basis. So we got to keep our mind yeah. on that. It's the biggest, biggest well, issue, biggest threat facing us right now. Well, let's uh, switch to another one, uh, and that's the subject of our electricity rates. They're often cited as a drag on, uh, on our competitiveness. Um, how are we going to address that? What Have you got any thoughts? Well, I mean, as you know, f uh, for a number of years now, we have been asking the government to stop signing these large solar and uh, wind turbine uh, projects at prices that are 20 times that we can produce power at mm -hmm. uh, hydroelectric or our nuclear plants. I was the uh, first uh, cabinet minister in Ontario. The first, we were the first government to actually put up windmills. Mm -hmm. 15 years ago, we put six up on our Bruce uh, nuclear site put the big 150 meter one you see at our Darlington site as you go across mm -hmm. the 401 and gave permission for the one at the CNE, although we don't, uh, we don't own it. Uh, I also at that time uh, toured, it was all the rage, remember? It was all the rage. Um, we all had to go into alternative uh, energy, wind, solar. Uh, I, along with my uh, deputy at the time, Ken Knox, we toured uh, Germany, er, many installations in Europe, California at the time. And uh, after about a year of research, came back to the Mike Harris government and said, unless you want to massively subsidize this industry, don't get into it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they say the uh, definition of maturity is to never say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how mature I am. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, you now see the UK saying it's the greatest boondoggle mm -hmm. ever. Just uh, six months ago, uh, there'll never be another windmill uh, built in the UK. Nothing wrong with windmill and solar. It's the way uh, uh, certain jurisdictions decided to get into it. The, the, the real gold mine and the problem, say, with the Samsung deal isn't the $350 million in subsidy. It's, it's the fact that we gave Samsung a, a third, access to a third of the grid in, 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 uh, forever, mm -hmm. as far as anybody can tell, because we don't have the whole contract. And that's the same with, uh, with these solar and, and, uh, and wind farms. They've got access to the grid, plus we're paying them up to 20 times 
uh, what we pay. We, we, we produce power at about 6.6 .6 cents at our nuclear plants and at our Niagara Falls and, mm -hmm. and other facilities. And as you know, uh, before we got at the government, they were paying as high as, as 67 cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah. And now they're down to between 38 and 47. But that stuff's gradually coming onto the grid. We're paying for it now in these 20 year contracts. So going through the FIT contract uh, process the way they did, what they should have done is said, look, we're gonna, the real gem here is we're gonna give you access to the grid for the first time. And in 1998, we passed the Energy Com Competition Act in my name when I was energy minister. And we opened up the grid. So it was no longer gonna be just Ontario Hydro Monopoly. We broke up Ontario Hydro OPG and Hydro One. And we said, uh, if you can generate power at the right price in a community that wants your windmills, and there are places that welcome windmills, the farmers like the, the least money they get uh, per year off the, off the, uh, mm -hmm. off the windmill uh, or the solar panels, um, fine. But again, uh, let's have competition in the sector. You guys, ladies and gentlemen, go out and set up your electricity companies and give us the best deal to the consumer. Instead, they went out and they bribed these companies right. Uh, called the uh, Green Energy Act, and um, that's the first thing I do. Second thing I would do, it's been mentioned by the government twice now, both in the, uh, in the two budgets ago and in the last budget, they said they were going to uh, tackle the uh, excessive pension uh, plans in our, in our hydro companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, you pay fi uh, $5, the taxpayers pay for every $1 employees put in, in most of these big companies. And, uh, you know, Deb Matthews sitting right in front of me, she knows that isn't sustainable, and they're going to try and do something about it. But I'd say to the Honourable Minister, since you said you were going to do that in 2012, you signed a bunch of collective agreements that still have that in there. So I would just encourage you to move on. We all need a break on our, on our hydro. Well, let me just ask one last quick question, because I think it will be useful for the folks in the room um, to understand a little bit about uh, how the PC party is rebuilding. I mean, what's the process? Uh, where, where are we in the, in, in the process? Well, we're putting, uh, putting our pistols away and uh, putting uh, uh, our, uh, what do you call, reinforced uh, work boots on so we don't shoot our feet off anymore in process. But um, kind of just made that up, so it's not very good. I'll practice it. Because <laughs> uh, I get asked this question all the time, yeah. and I think people get bored with my answer. But there's no secret. We have to go back to the grassroots. Uh, we, were, we used to be a tremendous party of some 150,000 strong, or significantly less than that in terms of paid up membership. Um, we probably had a bit of uh, meanness creep into the party o over the years. I don't know how that got in there. People perceived us as anti-union, and in times we were. We were anti-public service. Um, what I'm trying to get the party back onto, and I know our five excellent uh, leadership candidates all are saying and, and have in their hearts of hearts, uh, someone like me that, uh, that gets elected for 24 years, and, and all of my colleagues in the legislature that are there for a length of time, I mean, we're people persons. We mm -hmm. like people. Mm -hmm. Are we don't or we wouldn't be going to their doors every four years and begging, yeah. begging to represent them again. Um, we need so, and we're not disliked in our writings. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe some people hate mm -hmm. me, but mm -hmm. they stay rather <laughs> quiet. Um, but, you know, obviously, we're fairly, fairly well liked and respected, and we need to treat, and we, all of us need to treat uh, all of the people of Ontario like we treat our constituents. Great. Uh, with respect, uh, a big tent, and, uh, and truly listen to their ideas. There'd be tremendous ideas in this room that we need to listen to in terms to turn the province around. And in some cases, uh, I mean, the first call I got was within a, a half hour of, uh, of being elected by my caucus colleagues to be the interim leader from, from mm -hmm. Premier Davis, mm -hmm. who I just love. I was an assistant for six years at Queen's Park when Mr. Davis was still Premier uh, through my university years. And uh, he said, don't be afraid to thank the government once in a while too. Right. So. Uh, I haven't had many occasions to do that, but I'm still trying to think of the odd time. But um, I will praise you, Deb, if there's something uh, something good happens. Uh, but also, it's our it's, uh, but it's also our job to uh, day in and day out uh, hold them to account. I mean, we wouldn't have found out about the gas plant scandal it hadn't been for us. For 18 months before any of you saw reported that it was a billion dollar scandal, we were saying that each and every day at Queens Park. It just took that long to get traction, and hopefully, they won't do it again. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much uh, for your time today, uh, uh, Jim, uh, and you're certainly welcome to knock on the door of my farm anytime. Um, thank you for moving to my right, <laughs> yes. by the way. Yes, uh, and uh, um, uh, before we, uh, um, uh, actually, Jim, we're, we're, we're wrapped here, and I just, uh, before um, we leave the room, um, there's going to be a 15-minute break, um, and uh, I think it's actually, yeah, they're saying five minutes now. So there'll be a five minute break. Um, we blame the earlier sessions. Oh, sorry about we, that. No, we were, not us, we were good. 
<laughs> but, uh, but the second round of the concurrent strategy sessions will take place uh, at 10 o'clock sharp. Uh, we had a great set of sessions yesterday. I'm sure those of you who participated in them know that. And I'm very, very excited about the next round. Uh, so the OCC staff is going to help direct you to your rooms. The sessions are going to start at 10. Uh, so uh, away to the races. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Jim. Thank you. Mm -hmm.